I really believe that we are at a crossroad because I'm looking at these stories and I do this every single day, looking through the news, trying to figure out what I'm going to talk about. And today I was really reminded of the opening of A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. I really believe that's true. I really believe that we right now are living in a time that in some ways is so encouraging and uplifting and we're right on the cusp of a world that could be more free, more prosperous, more virtuous than any world that has ever come before us. And we also, at the same time, are on the cusp of a world that we could misuse all of the amazing things that are coming forward and, and we could very quickly devolve into darkness. We could see a new dark age, not because we would have a lack of technology per se, but that the power would be in the hands of the wrong people. And in certain ways, there is some similarity between right now and the early 1900s at the start of the century. Because you look at what was going on in the early 19th century, especially post-World War I, and radio technology was developing, telephone technology was developing, TV was developing. We were having these massive, massive technological advances. Cars were becoming cheaper and more common. It was going to be easier for people in the, in the outside the cities to be able to access them. It was going to be easier for middle class people to have all these luxuries. It was such an exciting, amazing time, and they were right there on the sidelines, right there, right over the hill before everything started to come together, and World War II happened. And so, I don't, I don't know. I mean, it's just such a, a mixed feeling there, and I really found two stories that I think highlight that. And I wanted to present them to you, because I'll go ahead, because I want to end on a, a better note. I want you to look at all the darkness in the world. And this story really kind of hit home with that for me. There is a woman right now in the UK that is trying to sue a hospital and, and sue her doctors for what she calls a wrongful birth. So uh, Ed, Ed Yada Mordell is suing a British hospital for $250,000 for the cost of raising her son, claiming that she experienced what's known as a wrongful birth. And what a wrongful birth is, she's saying that she should have aborted her own son. Her son, who is now four years old, has Down syndrome. I just sat there staring at my computer screen thinking, how can any woman especially look at her four-year-old son and think, gosh, if only I had killed him when I had the chance? I mean... The level of lack of sympathy for any person, let alone your own child, your flesh and blood, and seeing that person and saying, man, I, this is just so inconvenient. If only I had killed him when I, I had the chance. That takes a soulless person. But... Anybody that their worldview is so twisted that they think that that is acceptable to say or acceptable to even think, I don't know how that person wakes up in the morning and looks at themselves in the mirror, really. And I get that raising a child with special needs is incredibly difficult. I don't know it because I've never done it myself. But I've known families that did, and the way that they take care of their children is nothing short of heroic. I mean, there is a, it takes a incredibly special person to take care of a person with special needs. It, it does. And, and I have close friends that have this situation. It takes an incredible amount of love and patience. I, I get that. But even if you had somebody that fell short in those areas, even if you had somebody that found it incredibly frustrating. And I'm sure everybody that has that situation at times gets frustrated or upset and ask why that happened. But to want the person to die 
because of your own inconvenience, that raises to a whole other level of apathy for your fellow man. I, I don't see how anybody gets to that level. And it just, it absolutely breaks my heart that there are people that, that look at that. I can't imagine anything more evil other than actually just killing your child yourself than seeing your child who is alive and wishing that you had killed them when there weren't going to be any legal penalties for it. Because do you know what that tells me? What that tells me about that person? Well, the only thing that's keeping me from killing my kid is the fact that the law doesn't allow it. Because when the law did allow it, I really wish that I had killed them then. Now I can't because it's illegal, so I guess I won't kill them. That's what this says. And part of the reason that that line of thinking that she believes is okay and acceptable is because of the society that we fostered that doesn't treat life as though it's sacred or meaningful for people inside the womb. That's that's where we are. And because of our advanced medical technology that allows us to predict very early on when a kid has Down syndrome, that's an amazing thing. Families can get prepared earlier. They can know what's happening. It's not nearly as much of a culture shock when the baby actually does come. That's a wonderful thing. But we're not using it for that. We're using it to determine, okay, well, you know, if they got Down syndrome, they're going to be awful lot to handle and they're going to be a handful, so I need to go ahead and get rid of that right now. You see the difference there? We have amazing medical advancements. And it kills me that the thing that people are using it for is to take the life of other people. I just, I can't understand how someone gets to that point. But on the other side, the light side, and this is what I'm talking about where I, I really do think that we're on the edge of what could be really amazing or really horrifying. On the other side of that, we're using technology to do really amazing things. There's this uh, story that I pulled from Fox News. First baby in U.S. born to mother who received uterus from a deceased donor. So that's the headline. For the first time in the United States, a mother became pregnant and gave birth to a healthy baby after receiving a uterus transplant from a deceased donor. The Cleveland Clinic, which oversaw the transplant pregnancy and June birth as part of an ongoing clinical trial, said both the baby girl and the mother are, quote, doing great. We couldn't have asked for a better outcome, Uma Perni, MD, at the Cleveland Clinic Maternal Fetal Specialist, said in a news release, It's important to remember this is still research. The field of uterus transplantation is growing or is rapidly evolving, and it's exciting to see what the options may be for women in the future. See, that I that's amazing. Just looking at that and, and reading that, you have to understand there you can literally on one hand Count the number of women that have had this procedure done to them in the U.S. Now, they've done uterus transplants before, but it's always been from another living woman. You take one woman that's alive, you take her uterus out, and you put it into another living woman. This is somebody who died, and you're doing an organ donation just like you did from a heart or a lung or something like that, just like you would a, a normal organ donor the way we usually think about it. That's incredible. And there have only been about, I think the number was five of all the women that have, have had this done, and that a woman was actually able to take a pregnancy to term and birth a healthy baby. That's, in, I, I can't even describe how incredible that is. Because you think about it, as complex and amazing as something like a human heart or a human lung is, it doesn't grow another human. The female uterus is an incredibly complicated piece of equipment. Wow, we have a completely new person that was grown 100% in a womb that was taken out of a deceased woman and put into one that was living and was able to give a woman that previously had no chance of conceiving whatsoever to taking a full-term pregnancy and the way that they described it, not having any complications, everything went smooth. 
we are living in really, really amazing times and, and we're making so many critical medical advancements. And I, I just cannot describe how, I guess, optimistic I am about this, which kind of surprises me. But even after reading this, I have to think about the way that we're using technology in, in, in this instance, an amazing way. And in the previous instance, in an incorrect way or a way that brings death and pain, as opposed to something like this, which brings life and joy. And so it really does present this dichotomy of choosing good or choosing evil. It's not about the advancements, whether it's medical technology or any other technology. It's how you use it. And a perfect example of this is, can you imagine a world? Can you imagine a world where the, the big dictators who killed millions, Mussolini, Mao Zedong, Stalin, Hitler... Can you imagine a world where those people had access to the level of technology that we have right now? Think about it. You know how hard it was for Hitler to round up Jews in Germany and Poland and all the other territories he took over. How easy would that have been if he had GPS? All he'd have to do is find all the Jews and microchip them. And then he could find them no matter where they went. I mean, you look at what's going on right now in China with Project Dragonfly. Imagine if, if Mao had had that level of technology. He could have killed millions of more people. You look at the Holodomor in Ukraine and what Stalin would have done if he had had better technology, better able to track people, better able to su suppress people, better able to tamp down the resistance that he experienced in Ukraine. I mean, it really does make you shudder to think what people like this would have done with the way that everything's online now. People are incredibly easy to track. They're easy to find. Every aspect of your life can be monitored. 1984 will look like Paradise Island compared to the level of technology we have now. And that ought to terrify everybody to think that people with that kind of malice, people with that kind of wicked intent that want to control every aspect of somebody's life, now they have the tech to do it. We must be more vigilant and more determined than ever to preserve liberty. Because as horrible as it was when different parts of the world lost liberty in the previous century, the results will be far more detrimental now that we're living in a new century with this new technology. We have got to get this right. You know, you really should like this video and subscribe to the Tactics YouTube channel. Oh, what's that? You want to know what's on the channel before you subscribe to it? Oh, no, no, no. It's like Obamacare. So you got to subscribe to find out what's on it.